So you can do that to, to have a warp drive. No matter or energy that we know of in the universe has to make the geometry happen. It's a, it's a debate, ultimately. We've all wondered if time travel is real. Luckily, thanks to scientific progress, we can now address this question more scientifically. Time travel means moving between different moments in time, much like we move between different places in space. This kind of journey usually involves a fictional device called a time machine. So without any suspense, the answer is a clear yes when it comes to traveling to the future. However, traveling to the past is a much more complicated matter. In this episode, we will explore Brian Cox's explanations regarding warp drives and wormholes. The problem with wormholes is that you, it looks like you can build time machines because you can, you can get back into the past. So then when we have a quantum theory of gravity, then there will be some physical process that does not allow wormholes to exist. This is Reveal the Mystery. If you're curious to learn mysteries of the world, space and beyond, consider subscribing. The problem, we allowed Gargantua to draw us closer to the horizon, surpassing the speed of a powered slingshot, propelling us toward Edmund's planet. Ever since we gained a scientific understanding of the stars, we've pondered the requirements for humanity to achieve interstellar travel. However, a cosmic aspiration inhibitor emerges in the form of unimaginable distances. Light, the fastest entity in the universe, requires 4.2 years to reach Proxima Centauri, the nearest star to the Sun, situated approximately 40 trillion kilometers away. Our galaxy, the Milky Way, spans about 105,000 light years. Even if we could travel at a substantial fraction of the speed of light, it would take us millions of years to traverse our galaxy. But what if there existed a swifter, unconventional approach to this predicament? Einstein's theory, Einstein's theory of general relativity, is our most comprehensive understanding of the nature of space and time. Einstein's theory of general relativity is our best theory of space and time. Just imagine it as a thing, sort of a, a, literally a sheet a surface. And all the theory says is that if you put matter and or energy into that, then it curves it. And it envisions space and time as a literal sheet or surface. According to this theory, when matter and energy are introduced into this space-time fabric, it bends, distorts, stretches and contracts in response. To illustrate this concept, consider the example of the Sun. The massive spherical body of the Sun warps the surrounding space and time, causing what should be straight paths to curve. This is why light bends around the Sun and the Earth orbits it as they travel through this curved space. Einstein's theory of general relativity is based on a solution to his field equations. Furthermore, theoretical physicist Miguel Alcubierre proposed a speculative concept known as a warp drive. This idea suggests that a spacecraft could achieve apparent faster-than-light travel by creating a field with an energy density lower than that of a vacuum. Rather than exceeding the speed of light within a local reference frame, this spacecraft would contract space in front of it and expand space behind it, resulting in effective, faster-than-light travel. In the context of general relativity, one typically begins by specifying the distribution of matter and energy to determine the associated geometry of space-time. However, it's also possible to reverse this process, as Alcubierre did when he constructed his metric. This approach allows for solutions that may violate certain energy conditions and necessitate the use of exotic matter. You'd have to have the right stuff to do it. But that stuff is not real. That seems to be As the far case. as we know. Yeah. Will wormholes exist? Imagine you're traveling from Los Angeles to Australia and the usual way takes a long path around the Earth. But what if there was a shortcut, like a tunnel straight through the planet? In Einstein's theory, you can describe this shortcut in terms of the geometry of space. The first question is, can you actually create this shortcut? There's another aspect of this theoretical idea, wormholes. These are like magical tunnels in space. But when scientists study them, it seems that as soon as anything tries to go through a wormhole, it becomes unstable and collapses. In simpler terms, it's like trying to use a door that disappears when you touch it. We're not completely sure, 
because we don't have a complete theory for both gravity and tiny particles, called quantum theory. But most scientists think that stable wormholes and time machines, like in sci-fi, probably can't exist in our real world. Stephen Hawking even suggested that the laws of nature might prevent them. Warp drive. Geometry. To create those folded geometries characteristic of warp drives, you need to determine how and where to position matter and what type of material would induce the desired folding in the geometry. This specified geometry, known as a warp drive geometry, can be documented. Consequently, the question arises, what kind of substances would you need to introduce into the real universe to achieve this specific warping? Typically, it turns out that such substances are quite exotic, often possessing unusual properties like negative pressure, which are not found in any known matter or energy within the universe. Nevertheless, you can still mathematically describe the geometry using Einstein's theory, perform the necessary calculations, and even construct wormholes connecting distant parts of the universe, potentially enabling time travel capabilities. Bubble Drive Geometry in the world of physics, there are scientific papers that suggest you might need less mass to bend space and time than our sun has. But there's a tricky problem involving negative energy that no one had solved until Eric Lentz came along. He discovered a special feature in the way space and time work, particularly in the equations Einstein came up with to explain how matter and energy affect space and time. Lentz looked into the assumptions that led to the need for negative energy in Alcubierre's work, similar to what his colleague did. He started by thinking about space and time as a bunch of super-thin layers stacked together. He found that Alcubierre had used fairly simple math to move from one layer to the next, while Lentz used more complicated math that deals with fast changes. This resulted in a warp bubble that was different from what Alcubierre had proposed. Even though it still required a lot of mass and energy, Lentz's calculations suggested that you only needed positive amounts. Lentz's warp bubble had a unique shape compared to what Alcubierre suggested back in 1994. It looked like diamond-shaped regions in the change space-time, kind of like a flock of birds. Creating this space-time shape in reality would involve lots of layers made of rings and disks, but they wouldn't be solid. Instead, they'd be made of a super-dense fluid, filled with charged particles, similar to what's inside neutron stars. Physicist Alan Everett's math showed that warp bubbles might also allow for closed time-like curves, which could mean traveling backward in time, following the rules of general relativity. But even if the laws of physics could technically allow these time loops, the chronology protection conjecture suggests that quantum effects would step in and prevent them in any situation where classical general relativity says they're possible. This could happen when weird fluctuations build up at the edge of the space-time area where time travel might work, creating so much energy that it messes up the whole time machine idea. Although the conjecture isn't proven, it's supported by quantum field theory. It doesn't say you can't go faster than light, but it suggests that if you tried to build a time machine using this, something would go terribly wrong like a huge explosion, or even creating a black hole. Now let's talk about something exciting, wormholes. They're like tunnels in space and time. The first kind that people found would disappear too quickly to go through, and they're connected to black holes. But some physicists think that tiny wormholes might be possible without needing any weird stuff. Instead, they could be stable with matter that's charged and super light, so it doesn't turn into a black hole. Wormholes fit with Einstein's theory of relativity, but we're not sure if they really exist. We're still exploring and trying to figure that out. 